Welcome to Kellis Coder and today a very special video with this chess computer, the SC2 from the Deutsche Demokratische <laughs> Republik, East Germany. The SC2 is a very special computer. It was produced in East Germany. A thousand were made and they were hand soldered by a team of women. And ironically, this wasn't designed in the DDR. It was basically a clone, a copy of this thing, the Chess Challenger by Fidelity. It is a computer that was created in 1979, a chess computer in uh, Miami, Florida. And the code was written by uh, Ron Nelson. And this is just a clone, but they made it their own. So let's have a look on what it looks like and we do need to fix it. It's not working. What a surprise. This is the SC2 chess computer from East Germany. A thousand were made for the Western market, but it was a tremendous flop over here because we had proper chess computers by Fidelity Electronics, for example, which this is a clone of. These machines were completely handmade to keep the cost down. Hand soldered and it has some nice buttons, but as you can see, it doesn't properly work. When it starts, it should say P51. And I get a lot of ease and nothing. And yeah, this seems to be very, very broken. And one of these lovely push buttons is actually stuck in the up position. C3 doesn't want to go down for some reason. So let's get out the tools and see if we can save this piece of very nostalgic recent history. It actually feels very, very solid, but flathead screws, really? We didn't use those in 1960 anymore. When I had finally undone all the screws, I had a real surprise. A PCB without solder mask, a lot of dried flux and an open transformer. Scary. It makes you wonder how safe Wartburgs and Trabants were to drive in as well. Now the soldering is really ace, it really looks well soldered by these women. But cleaning, they didn't clean any of the flux. And this particular model came from April 29th, 1982. I had to do a Ben Hack and taste the chassis. I didn't know if it was Bakelite or wood. And it's actually wood. Wood painted with probably a lot of lead holding paint. So if I start to go bald and behave irrational, weird, weirder than usual that is, then please call a doctor for me, it may be lead poisoning. Or maybe I will go from libertarian to communist instantly by touching this machine. <laughs> that will be a nice story. From libertarian to communist, the story of a lost engineer. After I had unscrewed more screws than were probably in the reactor in the Chernobyl power plant, I finally got the PCB out. This is the U880, which is basically a clone, a stolen copy from the Western Z80. These big ass eight chips are literally 1024 bits each. They probably didn't have 1K EPROMs back then in the DDR. And these eight chips is the 256 bytes. Wow. And then we have a PO and a big ass regulator. And the buttons of which one is broken. In hindsight, two were broken. Shh. The great thing is that even these buttons can be mended. You can take them apart like so, and then have a good look. So you can see here that a lip has been broken off and that lip will hold a piece of ferrite that will make contact. So I will take that ferrite and glue it in place. Here I glued it in place with some super glue and I hope that this will actually salvage it. It looks good, it is stuck, so let's reassemble it. So I soldered the switches back in place. I took out three so I had easier access to that C3 button. But when testing it, it actually worked, but I still didn't have P51 in the display. But at least one thing fixed. Believe it or not, but this actually came with a schematic. So if we look here at the switches, this matrix is shorter. So if we follow that line, we get to this NAND gate. It is IS227, and if that isn't it, 
it may be the PIO that is dragging it down. That would be a bitch. The problem is that this PCB doesn't have a silk screen, so I don't know which IC is IS227. So I just run my probes along all the chips to find them. So I finally found that D103 and as I measured it, it was a bit weird, it was sort of floating. So I figured let's take it out and replace it. I took out the communist D103 and replaced it with a capitalist 7403, which is pin compatible. And let's see if this actually fixes the problem. It does reset properly now, but it's still not working with the one and the twos. They are still interconnected, bugger. Another look at the schematic would reveal that maybe the PIO is defective, but it could also be one of these switches that is shorted. So I will take these out and see if that solves the problem. Then we know it's a switch error and not the PIO, which is very difficult to find. So I had taken out two switches, which worked, and I'm checking here, and we still have continuity. So it must be this switch that is the problem child. That would be cool. So I took out the switches and gave it a test run, and look at that, I can press the two. So one of these switches is bad. Let's see if we can refurbish that switch. And then it's working. So the W key is wonky. It's shorted all the time. The ferrite rod in this switch also had slid down and made contact all the time. So I decided to also glue it in place with a tiny, tiny bit of glue. Just a tiny amount that I put down with a little resistor lead. A little goes a long way. And yes, we fixed two switches. Now I sold them back in place. And then the big question, is it working? E set, E2 to E4. Enter, yes. We can set the level. But now there was no sound, right? So another look at the schematic revealed it was this capacitor. All my manhandling had actually snapped off the lead. So I'm just resoldering it and that should fix that. Right, so we also have sound, cool. We have a working East German chess computer. So I put it all back together and then I saw this. Vor öffnen, netz stecke ziehen. Which means pull the plug before opening it. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. I never seen something this dangerous before. We have sound, we can set the level now, yes, we can reset and we can play E2 to E4, C7 to C5, um, F2 to F3, D7 to D5, uh, B1 to C3. It's working, yes! So there you have it, a piece of DDR history restored. It's kind of ironic that I'm restoring a piece of DDR totalitarian regime hardware when Germany and my country is now descending in the same totalitarian madness because of COVID. That really is scary and frustrating. Now what is next for this thing? Well, the obvious thing is, have it play against basically its origins. So East versus West. That will be in one of the next videos. So I hope you learned something. I never had two switches broken before. I never had a NAND gate broken before. So it's kind of ironic that the things that I never figured would break broke on this system but if you analyze it step by step you can fix anything and the great thing is this came with a schematic otherwise it will be a whole lot harder so i hope you learned something and see you in the next one